Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And um, today's special guest is Tom Roser with our founder, who is our founder, Jack Roser's son. And uh, we were talking about the American Dream legacy and uh, what you... We're talking about fathers. Relationship. And, uh, also, I have another son and, uh, and a daughter, Jean Marie, and uh, my son Otto. Uh, who was named after my father, was named Otto. And uh, I had such a great father myself, uh, a real man in all departments, and uh, a good father and, and a good husband and a hardworking, a wonderful, smart man with a, just an eighth grade education. So uh, I started uh, auto engineering three years after my father died. And uh, I felt privileged uh, at the time when my father died, I paid his last hospital bill. It wasn't that he couldn't or that he didn't have the money to, left to pay it, but I got to pay his hospital bill because he'd saved my life when I was 10 years old with a family and I was in a coma for two weeks and I'd had a ruptured appendix and all of that. But without the government getting involved, in 1933, my family saw that uh, I got good treatment, six months, six weeks in a hospital and all of that. I, in a way, I got to return a favor a little bit. I felt privileged to, from the family aspect to pay my dad's hospital bill. And uh, so th there's, there's a lot of family going on here. And uh, my son Otto is, uh, is a co very talented musician, plays in a band, and uh, especially loves uh, to teach young people how to play the piano, which he does uh, as well. And uh, Jean Marie is a mother and uh, has uh, her own family, and uh, I have a lot to be proud uh, about that. But uh, Tom is sitting here today because uh, this thing ties into the miracle that's happened here in Carpentersville. Uh, Tom picked up some things that I did, uh, had, glad I had the vision to do, to start uh, uh, working with the community that surrounded the plant that I had bought in uh, Carpentersville as the American dream from the $5,000 investment started developing. And I moved out of Crook County to get to Kane County. And uh, so the story evolved uh, there. And uh, uh, what Tom has done uh, in uh, taking the um, uh, start that I gave this thing and putting it on steroids, it's fantastic what's happened. And uh, the big fantastic thing is uh, Tom has uh, gone way beyond running our, a very successful and growing business with 500 employees uh, and uh, we have all kinds of them with us 15, 20, and 30 years now. They don't leave auto engineering and he's been, he's raised this thing very successfully. But along with it, he took off in recent years to save the town of Carpentersville. It was on the way to be in the ghetto and it had too much crime. People attributed that to the Spanish, but they were dead wrong about that. Because uh, the more Spanish we got, uh, the less crime we got. But uh, Tom uh, revolutionized this town by buying up the homes that were not in good shape. And uh, at this point, I'd like to get out of here and doing all the yapping I'm doing. <laughs> uh, Tom is the guy that did it. And uh, he made, he showed what a successful company could do for the community it lived in. Now, Tom, what year did you come in to work with your father I, at Otto? What I year was that? I came here in 1987. Okay. Uh, so it's been quite a while. But, you know, it, the family, and uh, we used to have Sunday dinners. I mean, we would talk about stuff. Uh, you'd have family dinners uh, during the week where you'd talk about Otto or how you interface with your neighbors and friends. And I think that just was the upbringing to have the, uh, what we have today here in, in Otto in working in the village. Uh, it's family values. And you clean up your own yard if you have mm -hmm. neighborhood family values. And you help your neighbor clean up his yard. Yes. And now, we've been able to do that here in Carpentersville. Now, you, you took over, you, you started working in 87. When did you start taking the initiative within the community? Was it immediately or was it a few years down the road? How did this all turn out? Well, How did that? It went in phases. Um, where Otto was started, 
in downtown Carpentersville. It was a slum. And that first building uh, was a liquor store, as we talked about before, that was abandoned. Still had all the liquor. The power was mm -hmm. off because it was a, an area so bad that people were afraid to stop even to buy alcohol. It really was The frozen bad. pizzas were in the refrigerator, you said. Yeah. There was a lot of vandalism. <laughs> okay. It was uh, horrible. Broken but, windows were the rule. And whether it was vision on Jack's part or necessity, uh, he bought the first brick building of Illinois Iron and Bull. But he started to fix it up, and it sent a community message. Well, I saw that, too. And um, eventually, we had, as I started working there, um, and uh, Jack is a sailor. We sailed together. He would work on the sailboat at, on, in the weekends during the fall. And there was a, an adjacent home that was a rental in bad shape that had a really <laughs> obstreperous uh, tenant. And eventually, that house went up for sale. And my theme was that man's home is his castle. If he you know, maintains his home, that's it. And if he's a jerk, OK, that's, if he abides by the law, that's it. But you don't want to live next to a jerk. But if you own the house that the jerk lives in, then he's not going to be a jerk for very long because he's not going to be there. He's not going to be there. So the first house we <laughs> bought really was um, to kind of control the environment around Otto mm -hmm. so that we didn't have scary dogs, loud music, and the rest. So if you stand on the front door of Otto and see a building that's in good repair, we own it. And that's how it really started, and it was focusing on us. We wanted to clean up the perimeter of our mm -hmm. business. Uh, as far as, as the company grew, we, need our own, we needed our own space for our factories. And the Illinois Iron and Bolt properties, of which we owned a third of the 400,000 square feet of this building, ours was in great shape. The others was not. And we were eventually able to buy them and fix them. What a blessing, though, for them to have been able to be available when you were ready to start moving forward with uh, it, too. This that American Dream has now got 350,000 square feet of reconstructed buildings that were built in the late 18th century, and around the 1880s and 90s, most of it, and the turn of the century with the old Illinois Iron and Bolt right that made farm plows here for 100 years, employed as many as 2,000 people, did everything on site. They made their own grinding wheels, and they generated their own power. Uh, it was a vertical manufacturing company, but in tragic shape. The mobs, the kids had broken a 1,000 windows in this thing, and uh, it was a, a big mess. Dilapidated. There were holes in the wall like a cannonball had gone through it. But they're beautiful, but, and but it's we right were, on the Fox River. We were able to focus on fixing our little environment, but it became iconic for Carpentersville. People who had seen this slum now were going out of their way to drive through this beautiful area. And I mean, they truly do that. No, it's beautiful. So it is beautiful. That is let how me, we started. Let me say something about that. There's a thing I say, uh, because uh, I, I, I stood out on the, on the banks of the Fox River here behind our factory one Saturday long ago, and the sun was low in the sky and the shadows were long. And I looked out in the river and there was a swan swimming by there and uh, some, some geese, which is fairly common here. And I looked at it. What I was looking at was this factory building that we had fixed up that looked decent by that time. I looked at the river. There were islands in the river. There's cliffs there. And there's, uh, these days, there's eagles, golden eagles. And bald eagles. Bald eagles flying over our plant. It is a beautiful place. I say God and the glacier went through here mm -hmm. 10,000 years ago and sculpted out one of the most beautiful places in the state of Illinois. With that river, that island, the cliffs, the trees, this is a beautiful place. People fish there. It's Every also, day. there's a public, there's a lot of public picnic tables and things. No, they're, they're, they're all private picnic tables. They're private. There are picnic tables. <laughs> but we let people fish and use them with one requirement, respect the area. There's no garbage cans because they respect the area. They take their garbage with them. This can work. It does. And it does. We have a sign that says, um, this beautiful place uh, is owned and maintained by auto engineering. Please help us keep it clean. And they do. They respect it. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. And if somebody doesn't respect it, I've got a bunch of apostles out there saying, take your garbage and go home. 
That's the fishermen. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the fishermen, the apostles. <laughs> and you know, I, I do want to hear now. You, you've got this area where all of your buildings are on, and the surrounding areas, but you've also gone a step further. And when we come back after the break, I want to hear a little bit about auto homes, how they're adding value to the community, and the Boys and Girls Clubs. Can we talk about that when we come back, Tom? You bet. I am very excited. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 